And we're back with some more oxygen not included on the baby mini base. The mini baby base. Uh, today we are going to get around to getting back in here to the magma biome, which hopefully... I think we can go back in here now. That All the steam isn't gone, but it's down to such minuscule amounts. We should be able to just build ladders in here with hopefully impunity. I replaced the gold amalgam pump here with a steel one a while back, and yeah. Uh, oh, a few questions there were. They, it was... A uh, question was asked, why didn't I just put a steam turbine up here and start bleeding off the steam? There's just, well, there's not enough of it. You need at least about, well, I think it's two kilos of pressure below steam turbine in total. It just, it, we, we didn't have enough to really work with. We only got a few drops in here. I have to transfer for some heat, but not enough to, oh, make sure here. I'm just making sure that there's no magma going to be touching any of these ladder segments or they will immediately disappear. And from what I can see here, they don't seem to be gaining temperature. Hmm, perfect. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll skip this forward a bit while we get all the ladders in, and hopefully, just hopefully, we can dig through all of this. Uh, at the same time, oh, over here, one good suggestion was, why don't I just brick that up like that? That will stop any of that. Uh, if when we do have this open, no regular should. Well, it'll be harder for the regular to get in here if we only have one tile open. Uh, a smart plan. A smart plan. Wish I'd have thought of that earlier. And one other thing I want to take care of. We have a whole bunch of, where is it, natural gas. We have a ton, literally a ton of natural gas sitting right there. And I'd like to start putting that into a, well, dumping that into a natural gas generator and using it to provide us with power. Ooh, what have we got actually in the printing prod today? Oh, we already have so many critters. You know what? I'm just going to take water. Water is always good. Can't go wrong with water. But uh, I do want to use that natural gas. So what I'm thinking is we feed it into this gas pump and we're going to have to make a little bit of a vacuum for it. Ooh. One second. I had a little plan here and it seems to have worked. I was trying to get that, uh, there was a blob of water trapped there. Now we can mop all of that up and make our lives safer. But over here, we are going to deconstruct that tile and... Okay, that doesn't fall. That's a problem. I was hoping to get all of that uh, natural gas to fall down here. It would have made life so much simpler. Instead, we're going to have to deconstruct this tile also. Uh, unfortunate, but uh, the way the world, the cookie crumbles. I wonder if we can push it across and... Ah, uh, no. It immediately pops back up to the top. I think we're going to have to dig down here and sort of force it out here. I want to dump it into this area. Uh, it'll all become clear as we go along. Mm, you know what? I think we shall wrangle these up again to make sure they don't interfere. Once they're wrangled, we'll break this open and I think we can shunt that sideways. All right, we have walled the natural gas in here. Once we place that brick, that should force all of that junk onto this one tile. That's all I want to do. Come on. Come on. Perfect, perfect. Now we can... Now we can go about restoring this place to what it was. Where was it? Yeah, we wanted a we wanted a water sieve in there. You know what? We'll we'll throw one right back in there. There you go. Uh, eventually, those poke shells will break free of their bonds. It's fine. Now, what was the plan here? This is going to be a very simple vacuum style room. Oh yeah, if you get any paku, we won't be able to dump them into the tank. But I'm not too worried. We've already got too many paku as it is. Uh, well, deconstruct that. We're going to use just a, a tiny blobs of water if we get up the gas overlay. Those tiny blobs of water will stop gas from passing by. And at the same time, we'll sort of have ourselves a kind of liquid lock, almost. Not quite, but almost. And there we go. How are we doing? Yeah, right, so we turn this sucker on right here by grabbing the power lay overlay. Done. Now, once that's a vacuum, we can send someone in there to uh, release the natural gas. Well, once we set up a power plant and all that for us. Uh, how are we doing down here? Okay, okay, we're looking pretty good. However, there's oh, still vacuum over here. You know what? We'll move forward a little bit more. And the plan is, of course, to dig all of this out. Uh, yeah, let's hope no one tries to go the long way around. I don't think they can get down that side, but I do want to make sure they have the option to if needs be. Well, what might happen is sometimes they have a tendency to jump over here and then the only way to get them out of there because I because I can't build a ladder down is to run them all the way back out there to there. It's a long trek. It's a little bit warm, I won't lie, but it's, you know, their only option. All right, we should be able to dig through here. Ah, there we go. You know what? We will cancel that. If we can dig straight across, even better. Just cuts down on the problems. I, I, I will have to micromanage them though just to make sure they don't get in there uh, or just don't trap themselves there. At the same time, we're uh, slowly but surely configuring this up here to work correctly. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, we're just moving some uh, transformers around so we can plug in a natural gas power supply. This here is going to be our natural gas generator. I had to do a lot of squishing about to get things to fit. Well, that's pretty much par for the course on this map. You have to squish something else to make room for, well, anything. Uh, there will be a gas. We'll get dumped into the natural gas generator yeah, intake. Uh, the output from it will... Who made a mess? 
Why did you make a mess? What the? Uh-oh. Is, is there water flowing? Please tell me there's water flowing. Yes, there is water. Water is going up there. How did this happen? Okay, I need to do some investigating here because that just makes no sense to me. All right, we're, we're going to give everyone just a little bit more downtime. Maybe they need a tiny bit more downtime to get back to their beds. Also, the food poisoning has gotten a little bit out of control. The reason the food poisoning is so crazy is because of the abyssalite. Yes, I know. Who told abyssalite could cause food poisoning? But it turns out it can. What happened was uh, when this insta-boiled the water, uh, that water then went up here, which I'm mopping up because, you know, it's it's in the wrong liquid tank. It shouldn't be here. So we mop up that liquid. That's that's great. Unfortunately, that liquid is full of germs. Uh, that liquid get dumps, gets dumped over here into our clean water supply, which then gets taken around to be put into supercomputers and pretty much spread around to anywhere that needs water, which is why our germ overlay looks like some sort of germaphobe's nightmare. Oops. Oh, well, stuff happens. Nothing we can do about that now. Uh, I'll, I'll worry about it later. A little bit of food poisoning won't kill us. Never, ever taking a slow learner, so we'll just go with the gold amalgam. We also have, we already have nine air break horns, so not a big deal. And salt water, we don't need it. Uh, uh, almost finished down here, but over here, we're ready to start firing this up. We have, yep, that's hooked up. How are you doing? You're not in gas. Of course you're not in gas, but we are going to go in there. And where is it? Natural gas. Here's something you don't do very often. We are just going to empty that ton of natural gas into the surrounding room. If you've done this right, the door should close behind it and none of the gas should escape. Well, hopefully, if we've done it right. If we've done it wrong, a whole bunch of that's going to escape out there and it's going to be an ungodly mess. Okay, duplicant, do your magic. Hello? Okay. Did that work? Oh. Popped your drums. Oh, that would probably 167 kilos of pressure. Yeah, that that's probably what got you. I didn't think it happened that quickly. But let's see here. Doors close. And perfect. One ton of natural gas stored nice and neatly with the least amount of worries possible. Straight into our natural gas generator. Oh, oh, automation. Yeah, I need to hook this up to something, don't I? That would be that would be a smart plan. Um hmm. Yep, yeah, automation battery. All right, we'll hook it up to the same as the hydrogen generator because they're our lowest level drawers. They basically fill the batteries and they should hopefully take all the pressure off our coal. Our coal is still... Damn it, why is someone else making a mess? Well, so it would appear that's not helping. Why not? Hmm. You know what? I will keep an eye on it. This is weird. I've never had a base where dupes just started peeing everywhere. This is my first one. <laughs> Okay, uh, never mind. We're, I think maybe it's to do with the Atmo suits taking so long to get back and forth. Uh, I'll figure it out as we go. For the time being, we need to get in here and get this cord out so we can get onto an alternative power supply. Uh, the reason I wanted to get that natural gas set up is, one, people in the comments were mentioning it, uh, but two, our coal is only at 16.5 tonnes and our sandstone is running out. We've got 50 tonnes of sandstone left. That's That's bad. We need more sandstone. Well, I haven't quite finished this, but I have discovered something interesting. Quill here has come out of the bathroom, and however, they are covered in so many germs that even when they're washing their hands, look, they finish a whole rotation, they still have too many germs on them. So they stop to wash them again, and again, and again, and again, and again. <laughs> there, uh, uh, there's, there's too many germs. They're, they're, how are they ending up with so much germs on them? That that doesn't seem possible. Like, how you have two million food poisoning germs on you? I I I don't I don't get it. Oh yeah, um, I'm going to probably have to get my hands on chlorine at some point because this is starting to get a little bit out of control. That person is uh, yes. The turns out staying at home and washing your hands it's spreading. It's now everywhere. There is no avoiding it. Even the duplicates are doing it. Oh, the uh, the best name I've heard for this digging out project is The Floor is Lava. Yep, I have to agree. The Floor is Lava seems like the perfect name for this. Next up out of the fun printer, we've got three larva eggs. We're going to print those out immediately. I've also hooked back up the, the carbon skimmer to some automation. This way we can dump off the slicksters here. Uh, the reason I, I set it up this way, it's actually rather simple. If the slicksters are in their own liquid, as in the crude oil they, they poop out, they'll exchange heat with the surrounding environment very quickly. Uh, they don't exchange heat with oxygen very quickly though, so we can leave them up here, they'll survive a long time and consume a bunch of carbon dioxide and give us some crude oil, which we'll probably find a use for sooner rather than later. 
However, if we put them down here, let's say, and did it, they'd quickly kill themselves because the temperature would equalize so quickly. So we'll just sweep all of those down here. Come here, all of you. So once they're all down there, they'll eventually hatch in about 20 cycles and we'll be fine. And over here, we'll continue on with the floor is lava. Before we do finish this off, I have a very important question I'd like to ask. How? How do we have 313 million food poisoning germs in here? That just doesn't seem possible. Like, there, there's less food poisoning germs in the polluted water. I don't, I don't understand. There's a million germs in here, nearly, nearly 2 million. But this one has 300 million. I, I can't. Like, that's why everyone's collapsing. They're, they get stuck at the sink washing their hands for eternity. And then they just collapse from exhaustion. Oops. Oh, well. <laughs> this is the weirdest thing I've seen. Just uh, one of those bugs that you never see coming that just does weird things. All right, now that this is done, we can get around to installing a power system over here. I just want to grab a little bit more regolith now that we're in a little, a little bit of downtime from the from the meteor showers. At the same time, there's been some uh, concern about the metal we're bringing in. This gold amalgam is 300C and all that. We don't have to worry too much because our, our cooling system is definitely cooling everything down around here. Some of this will be a little bit hot, but it's not going to be hot enough to cause enough problems to our cooling system. Metal just has this, such a low thermal conductivity, it makes no real difference to us. Uh, especially considering that water has such high thermal conductivity and how powerful aqua tuners are. Let's, let me just uh, hoard up a little bit more regolith and then we'll get on with the power. It got a little bit... It started to rain outside. We pulled everyone back in. Uh, down here, we are going to start putting in our well, our steam turbine setup. Uh, one second, we'll speed this up a bit. But the steam turbine setup is going to be uh, interesting. You know what? We will... Replace all of those. Uh, the reason being, we have to sort of... Mm, we want to fit in two steam turbines here, and we need to have somewhere to sort of get all of this material, all the diamonds, all that. I want to drain all the heat out of these. I don't want to dump that into my base. I, I may have a decent cooling system, but I don't have a, that good a cooling system. So first off, let's get our sort of steam room down here together. What we need here is twofold. We need the ability to turn this magma into power, but we also want to be able to strip out all the materials that are down here. Ooh, damn. I probably should have went down there and stripped out all those materials first. That might might have been a smarter idea. They're all trapped under that now. Well, I want to be able to strip out all of the diamond and the... Well, what else is in here? Tungsten. Oh, basically all the junk that's down here. I want to be able to pick it up, dump it in here, and cool it down until it's about 125C. If I can get it down to that low a temperature, we actually have a chance. Oh, and occasionally dupes come in here and they pick up the refined carbon that's lying around the place. They're using it to make steel. I, I think that is a good idea. Just keep that up. Good good work on your dupes. There we have our two steam turbines in on top, and we've also got in our power. But we're still going to need to deal with the cooling of this whole section. Like I said, we've got to get the materials through here, so we're going to need a lot of shipping rails. What we're going to do is debris is going to end up over here. We're going to ship it through this area to hopefully dump it into some steam, and then... You know what? Let, let's just skip this forward a bit as we start to put in the railings. It'll start to make more and more sense. A visual aid always helps. This should look sort of like what we're going to do. We're going to end up with a bunch of debris we're going to dump over here using this automatic dispenser. This whole area will be sealed up and full of some water. We'll uh, dump the debris in here, say, whatever it's down here, diamond, uh, tungsten, you know, not the, the abyss light. The abyss light we won't put in here. Maybe we will, but we won't put it through the conveyor loader. It won't really exchange any heat. It'll zigzag through here, and then once it gets to this, we're going to put on a, a shutoff on this. And if there's a, if it once it cools down below 200 degrees, we'll let it out the side here and we'll provide some additional cooling by putting wastewater from the steam turbine through here. Yes, there's going to be a lot of moving parts to this. We're trying to get, we're trying to get this stuff coming out of here at less than 100 C, which, or about 100 C. It's ambitious, but I think we can manage it, especially if we're very careful with our very limited resources. Though limited by 11 tons of steel. We have a lot of steel. Oh, that reminds me, I'm going to have to break in here. I'm going to have to break this vacuum, which kind of feels bad, but... Mm. Why am I getting scalding? Oh, yeah, I started storing all the refined carbon over here. Turns out that stuff's a little bit toasty. It's been dead in the oil biome for a while, so... Yeah. You know what? Not gonna worry about it. People people can go... They, they can go uh, to the hospital beds. Well, at the same time, the germs over here have dropped to 111 million. 111 million. All we need that to do is go down like another 100 million and we'll be fine. People will stop frantically scrubbing their hands all the time. Hey, right, let's, uh, let's get back to this. Uh, we need to re replace some of this here, and we need to put in some more shipping rails. And we need to put in a sensor. So once all of these get to the end here, if they're below 200 degrees, they will get shipped out here and all the way through this section. 
Now, where is it going? Well, there's some piping here coming from both of these steam turbines. All the output water will come out at 95C. We're going to split it into two kilos of water here. And those two kilos of water, well, two one kilo packets, and they can't boil in the pipe. So they'll come through here sort of counterflowing against the, uh, the hot metals coming out on this rail. And that should hopefully give us a nice... Mm, cool metal. Now the cool metal I have dumped over here, though at the moment I'm also sucking all the carbon dioxide out of the area. I want to get rid of all the carbon dioxide so this area is oxygenated and I'll probably just seal in the top just so that we can get the cooling going on, which reminds me we should start the cooling flowing down here. Uh, you, uh, where are we going to put you? Put you there, put you there, and think, oh that snip tool just makes life so much simpler. Perfect. Then we can delete that section out of it and our cooling loop has been extended. I might want to put in a few extra radiant pieces there though. Yeah, that might be an idea. Yeah, we'll put in a few radiant pieces down here just to make sure that the steam turbines don't uh, overheat. Perfect. Hey, right. once the carbon dioxide is out of there, we can seal this up. Oh, no wait. A few more pieces of copper down here. This is it. We're going to put in as much copper as we can for the sort of heat exchanger down here just to make sure we drain out as much heat as possible. Oh, and I better set these to a thousand or well, one kilo Bef right now because this actually requires deep interaction to get them set up. Oh, and we will also seal them in at the top up there and boom. Eh, we'll skip this forward a little bit more while we get in a few more of the trinkets and bits and bobs on this. I was just about to delete this ladder segment, put in the last steam turbine, you know, seal it up and then I realized... How do I get dupes in and out? <laughs> I, I sealed it in so perfectly and made it so tight that there's there's no way to get in and out of here. I think I'm going to have to cut out that so that it's only a, a two or three tile drop. I might have to do a little bit of modifications here and there. Nothing nothing too drastic, but yeah, we'll, we'll get this set up. Uh, over here, this should be looking sort of like what, it, what I've explained. Hopefully it's not too dumb looking. Uh, I also stuck in a temperature sensor down here. This temperature sensor is... I'm not actually sure yet. We may need to have a reason to know what the temperature in here is later on when we start dumping in magma into this. All of that magma is free igneous rock for later. But for now, for now, I'm just going to leave the temperature sensor just so that we don't have to break in here again. We've got a we've got a temperature sensor already set up and good to go for us. Never mind, they can build from on high. Done. Okay, uh, now we have to seal this up down here. This should be... Fairly straightforward, and then we need to plug this into something. I'm thinking we're just going to throw it in a transformer here for now. We'll tidy it up later. That's what I always say, of course. But, no, seriously, I will tidy it up later. Just not at this moment. I really just want to get this set up. Uh, we'll just throw it in a quick transformer. Throw that one right about... Oh, no, that's not actually on anything, is it? Fine, fine, fine. All right, power provided. Everything's powered up. These steam generators feed back into our base. Now we just have to fill some water in here before we start putting in any more resources. Oh, and we're going to do some sealing up down here as well, just to make sure everything's sorted. All those temperature shift plates are made of diamond. Diamond we liberated from the uh, the magma biome. Yeah, water-wise, I'm thinking, well, it's about time we emptied out these tanks of water. We've had these for ages. These are the tanks of water we used to make our first batches of steel. And if I recall, yes, yes, we did did. We did actually have output pipes on these so that we could uh, drain them. Uh, let me hook these up here to down here. I'm going to feed them directly into this and it should just dump right into the system. And the water starts to flow. Now I've put it in insulated pipes because, well, yeah, it needs to be in insulated pipes otherwise we're going to have problems. As that starts to flow in there. That stuff's all 70C. Now what we've done over here, I don't know if this was immediately recognizable as We've got a bunch of igneous rock. Oh, actually, we have igneous rock for the first time ever on this playthrough. Some of the, the magma solidified when I was building in here. But uh, we've got some igneous rock that's very hot, some of the bits of light, some automation wire, a few other bits and bobs. But if we just close this door, what happens the door closes and it forces the debris out the other side, which immediately starts exchanging heat with the water. Now all we have to do is do a little bit of a sweep to take up all of this stuff. So we want to take all of the abyssalite, the tungsten, uh, well, basically anything that's down here, and dump it into the in those doors, and then shove them in here into the, the steam room. All right, that'll get everyone sweeping. They'll take everything up there, throw it into this uh, auto dismantling dispenser, and we'll crush it off to the side. Uh, let's make sure we don't put too much water in here. How much do we want? Uh, say 100 kilos along the bottom should be fine. I'll just uh, sever this pipe when the time comes. Say, yeah, sever it right there. Boom. Problem solved. That should be enough water. Just I want enough water in here that this doesn't instantly flash to steam and start boiling everything. If this goes above 225, or it's the melting point on these things, not the melting point, the, the damage point on these 275, if it goes above that, 
we're gonna be in trouble. And we'll just close the doors, squish that sideways, open it again, and there you go. Ooh, eh. Do we need more water? I think we might actually need more water in there. Did that... What is going on? I think it's actually causing the water here to flash to steam instantly the moment it comes in contact with it. Okay, that, that's one way of doing things. Uh, next up, we want to take all of that stuff and we want to load it onto this conveyor loader. Now, we don't want to put the abyss light on. The abyss light will not exchange temperature very well, but everything else, definitely. All right, after carefully selecting all of them, uh, that should start loading them up in there. Now they go across the rail. Unfortunately, they're still in vacuum yet. This water has not flashed to steam. But hopefully, in doing this right, they should. Now, once it gets to here, it shouldn't be able to pass through. What? No, no, no. Below 200. Stop, stop, stop. How many do we let through? Okay, that's not the worst. That's not the worst. Uh, the good news about that... I'm sure there's good news. I'm trying to think there's good news. Yeah, there was plenty of metal there to absorb the heat, so by the time it gets out the other side, it's already cool. It's fine. Uh, steam in here is 145C. Oh, I forgot to hook up a, a sensor to this. We will hook up an automation sensor. We will just stick a signal switch on here. Uh, no, we're not, we're not using tungsten. That would be a bad idea. We'll just throw on some gold. Boom. Okay, two things we need to do next. One is queue back up iron to steel again for infinity. I turned it off so I could get some copper ore. Second is see what kind of blueprints we've got available. Oh, oh look, great bristleberry when we have tons of this stuff. Ooh, I'm going to have to take the coal. I, I know our power is just about to come online, but I still want the coal just so that we're safe. That's It's going to be our emergency backup, backup power. Uh, yeah, yeah. So let's get this started, and I think we might throw some more water in here. There we go. Let there be power. Now that that's going, how much power are we getting out of those? 700 watts? How? How much? Oh, it is pretty hot down there. Uh, you'll notice over here, though, the, where is it? The water is coming down through here preferentially. So we've got one kilo of water coming through here, and it's dropping the temperature in this area, or it should slowly drop it to 95C as the water goes through. That's the temperature the water is actually coming out at. So as it passes through here, it slowly drags the heat out of the metal. At the same time, the metal that's sitting here is slowly dumping its heat. And when it does, it then pops up through here, goes to all the metal tiles, which are counterflowing against the hot water. So we're actually using the output from the steam turbines to drag down the temperature of our output metal. This should hopefully allow us... Oh, that's way too hot in there already. You know what? We're going to have to hook up some more water. I wasn't sure exactly how much water we needed, but it's definitely more than that, considering how fast some of this area is getting heated up. It's over 200 degrees on the one side, which means we're burning heat we don't need to. On the bright side, we have no other use for this tank of water at the moment. Anyway, let's uh, let's skip this forward just a little bit. I think for the time being, we're, we're pretty good. There's one thing I have learned here that's very valuable and I didn't know before I started. And that is uh, the metal behind here is steel. And if you notice, it's dropping temperature very, very slowly. However, the diamond on the rail is 129, 130. Diamond has dropped temperature, no problem. Everything else is like... Come on, Steel, hurry up. You've literally caused us a backlog. So to make things easier on myself, I have uh, copy-pasted our settings over there, but what we're going to do is we're going to clear all of this, and we're going to send the Steel through first. I thought about leaving it to last, but you know what? We, I, I want the Steel. Uh, so there we go. Boom, and we'll close this door here. That should send you the last of the Steel. That should send you the last of everything, actually. Uh, perfect, we got a full batch of Steel right up there now. And then we'll just flick this just a little bit. Come on. If you're... Oh, if you're above that. Now turn off again. Boom. Uh, we let through a little bit of hot steel, but that's fine. That's going to clear the diamond off the rail, and now we're loading up with a whole batch of steel. I want to get the steel out of here quickly, if at all possible. What is that stuff looking about by the time it gets in? Ooh, 180. Still not the best. Oof. Ouch. Probably could have done better on the cooling front. You know what? It's fine. It's fine. Everything's gotten through. And the steel on the... Yeah, the steel on there will eventually cool down. Perfect. Once we get all the steel through, I'll then uh, copy-paste the settings so we can get through the rest. I think that all went rather well. And we're generating quite a bit of power. That's 670 watts from one, 538 from the other. Let's have a look at our power battery over here. Ooh. Our hydrogen and our natural gas is running, so... Oh, wait a minute. Do we have a backup? We actually are starting to, to collect hydrogen. That means we've stopped spending coal. If we've stopped spending coal, that is amazing. Oh, perfect. We've actually power stabilized. As well as that, we have all of this magma to draw on. Our next step after we... Why are you... What are you guys doing there? Diamond and Abyssalite. We had orders for you. Those orders shall be followed. 
Oh, uh, maybe. Can you get those? Uh, I'll also probably extend the ladder on a bit and get the last of that steel. But we're going to dump all of that in there. These will have to wait for a while. But once they're all in there, we're going to start putting in a pitcher pump. Because pitcher pumps and magma are always fun and perfectly realistic. Yes, I deleted the uh, the two ladder tiles and put in a pitcher pump. In fact, I made it out of the exact same sedimentary rock that the ladders were made out of. So they, they even picked up the sedimentary rock that fell down here to make it. I was worried it was going to just end up making more magma. If I do delete any of these uh, ladder segments, they do just drop down. Like I deleted one over here, it just dropped down, melted, and turned into even more magma. So technically, I could turn a bunch of sedimentary rock into igneous rock if I really wanted to. In fact, I could turn... Actually, all of my, my sandstone, sedimentary, and granite, all of them will melt in this, so I could technically turn them all into igneous. Don't need to, though. Don't need to. Uh, over here, though, what we're doing is we're going to want some mesh tiles, and we're going to want them made out of steel. And uh, we're going to put those two there. Uh, then once that's in, we are going to get a bottle emptier, stick it on top. And what we can do is we can dump magma in here as we need to. We're not going to do it just yet. We've already got... Wow. Okay, we're... How much heat we got in there? We may have overheated that slightly. Ah, you know what? I'm okay with overheating it just a little bit. And there goes a couple of pieces of steel. Perfect. By the time they get it, I just want to see what they're at when they're getting to just about here. Uh, 102. So... That is, yeah, I'm going to call that a win. We got them down to 100 degrees before the exit. That is just perfect. That's exactly what we're kind of looking for. They're down to a very reasonable temperature. And then after that, they pass through this area here. We've got a bunch of cooling coming in from our aqua tuner over... Oh my god. Look at this. It's a tiny basin already. I've managed to make a horrible mess. Uh, but uh, this is the aqua tuner here that's providing cooling for the whole massive polluted water cooling loop. And that passes through here, making sure that by the time they get to the end... They're pretty chill. Right, that steel is 104 degrees. Ignore ignore the steel. It's 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 just it's been, you know. There was some early mistakes. Early mistakes were made. I take full responsibility. What are you coming out at? 104, yeah, 100 degrees? I mean, I can live with that. Compared to the 1600 or so they started at, this is a joy. Sorry. Yeah, 1684 degrees. This works quite well and has the side benefit of generating as power. And the moment we start dumping magma in here, it will pop down here, solidify, and twist out the other side. Can't quite figure out a way to automate that, but it we'll, we'll have to keep topping it up. But the map's small. We, we should remember. Ooh, one last quick thing before this goes any further. I am going to deconstruct this, and we are going to double down on the hydrogen generators. Reason being, well, we, we don't need as much coal anymore, and since we're stockpiling hydrogen, it might be an idea to burn some of that off. I mean, we can get around to saving it later, but for the time being, I would prefer to have some sort of overflow capacity for it. Then we're going to have to stick on an overflow link on this so that it doesn't overheat. I mean, uh, it doesn't back up. If that backs up into the system, we're going to end up flooding the whole map with hydrogen. So yeah, what do we do here? Very simple system set up here. Uh, this is going to send out a red signal whenever the reservoir... Ah, you know what? Let's just uh, crack this open so it's a little bit simpler. Uh, it's going to send out a red signal whenever the the tank is below its amount. Where is it? Uh, send the red signal reservoir is high threshold full until low threshold is reached again. So the moment it gets to high, it's going to send out a red signal. The moment it hits 99% full, it's going to send out a red signal. This will flip it to a knot through a knot gate, which will drop it down here and turn on the hydrogen generators. This way, the tank should not overflow. We should be able to burn it off through the two hydrogen generators we got there. The natural gas generator over here is just put on a separate battery. So this battery, 70 to 80%. That means they'll, they should activate first. This one is 60 to 70%, which means it'll activate second and draw on our very finite natural gas. And then finally, it's 60 40 40 to 60 percent which will activate our coal generators as for our uh, steam turbines yeah they're just on their their only job is to to cool stuff down they don't care they're flat out all the time no rest for them uh, i'm still going to try and have to figure out a way of getting this to work the problem is even if i put a door there to stop the maxes i've kind of walled my cinema film with no options because if even if i put a door here say uh, right there Duplicants can reach through the door and still drop off magma at that. So I need some way of doing something, and there's no real way to automate it. Hmm. I'll have a think about that, but I might just have to do it manually, at least until we've gone through a whole chunk of this uh, magma biome. We've got a lot to go. Oh, and germ-wise. Germs, we're down to 37 million. I can't remember the last time someone stayed in the bathroom all day, obsessively scrubbing their hands. It Actually, it wasn't that long ago, was it? Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed our uh, attempts at cooling down the magma biome, and uh, good luck. Good luck.